Android 12 has landed in form of its first developer preview, and that means a couple of things. Firstly, it means that some of the stuff you're going to see in this video may not be there by the time the official launch happens in a few months' time. Secondly, it means maybe don't try this on your primary device, or at least don't install it on a device that you use every day, because being the very first developer preview, there are going to be bugs, and we've seen some already just in the first few hours of it landing. I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocket Lint, and here are a few of the new changes that have appeared in the first developer preview of Android 12. If you like this video, by the time you get to the end of it, please do leave a thumbs up, it'll mean a great deal to us. Hit that subscribe button and tap the little bell to make sure you don't miss any more of our videos. But let's dive in. So the first thing is a bluish tint. Now, this one might be quite hard to see, but there's a subtle light blue tint to a lot of the interface. It's like a pale mint blue, we can see in the drop-down quick settings shade and in the settings menus when you're using the regular light theme. The next change is the settings menu tweak, so as well as featuring that subtle blue tint in the background, the main settings menu has had a tiny bit of a tweak or a design refresh. The search bar at the top is no longer a long rectangular field that spans the entire screen, it's a shorter bubble, and the profile image that you tap to get to your account settings has been shifted outside and made larger. Dive into some of the settings options and you'll find a new toggle switch. It's smaller and shows a little tick when active, and a cross when switched off. Apart from that, it's largely the same as Android 11, but that could change as new updates arrive. The next change is enhanced screenshots. So it seems with all new versions of Android we get enhanced screenshot functions. Take a screenshot and head to the edit and markup function, and you can now type text onto your screenshots in a number of different font colours. Plus, you can stick some emojis on there if you want by pressing the little sticker icon. You can resize them easily too by just pinching to zoom. As a side note to this, you can now easily dismiss a screenshot thumbnail by just swiping it off the screen. Next up is a share sheet image edit. So similar to marking up screenshots above when you go to share an image file, there's a new edit option that lets you mark up pictures before you send them on. Just bring up the default share menu and tap more. Here it loads other apps and gives you the edit option next to nearby share below the image thumbnail. It's also been a new customization tweak. Google's slowly been improving its theming and customization options, and with the first developer preview of Android 12, you can now customize your home screen grid more. Essentially, Google added one more grid option. So now you have 4x5, as well as 4x4, 3x3, 2x2, and the default option. One of the more prominent changes is a new multimedia widget or control for your media. So they've changed the media control widget that appears in the drop down menu when you have music playing. Google's enlarged it and made it span almost the entire width of the screen and adjusted the layout so the controls are closer to the middle of the screen. It also takes up more space on the lock screen when it's active. Now if you're playing music on the phone locally, you can tap the tiny little icon in the corner of the widget and this brings up a new playback location pop-up window. Here you can adjust the music volume or quickly pair a new device like pairing earbuds or a Bluetooth speaker. And of course there have been changes to notifications as well, but these are quite subtle this year. So you may have noticed when we showed you the media player control that notifications have changed slightly too. So while visually they've tweaked the background and adjusted the transparency, the design has adjusted the layout of the text and the visuals as well. Also, there's a new easy snooze control you can tap on rather than having to swipe on the notification. So you can snooze a set notification for a specific amount of time before it reappears. In addition to that, there's a new app shortcuts menu. So when you long press on an app icon on your home screen, you get a much bigger pop-up menu than you did before, making it a little bit easier to use. And lastly, there's a new nearby share for Wi-Fi passwords. So this is a potentially handy feature that lets you quickly share your Wi-Fi network details with someone in the same room as you. So while you could share your Wi-Fi using a QR code scanner before, if you look beneath that in Android 12, you now get the option that says Nearby. Tap on it and turn on Nearby Sharing, and then it'll look for devices near you to share the details with. Now, as always, there are hidden features that aren't actually easily accessible, but some people with the right skills will get access to them because they know how. So XDA developers Michelle Rahman has actually been able to find a few different features that we can't see in our build. One of those features is a new picture-in-picture -picture enhancement where you can just pinch to zoom on the little floating window with your video playing in it to enlarge it. There's also a new one-handed mode similar to how iPhones used to do it in the past that brought stuff down halfway down the screen to make it easier to reach with your thumb. So that's it, there's your quick look at Android 12. 
With so long between now and the eventual launch, we're sure the list of changes will grow and Google will undoubtedly remove and adapt some of the ones we've already shown you. But if you have a spare device to try it on, go ahead and follow our visual guide on how to install it using the new Android Flash tool. Again, remember, don't put it on your primary device. It is very buggy and it might ruin your experience and make your life hellish. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media. You can follow me on there, ask me any questions you want or use the comments down below. If you like this video, please do hit that thumbs up, subscribe and tap the little bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one.